All right, and welcome back, everybody. I hope you've been enjoying the show so far. And uh, we've got our next match coming up of Ainley 2 versus Azert 1. But as per usual, we're going to go take a quick look at the bracket before we get started in the match. So a lot of pools are finishing up, too. So actually, one of the pools that just finished is Pool 1 that we're going to go take a look at. All right, and as you guys see here, Osborne 2 did manage to take the victory over Lizert 2 and avoid the four-way tie that potentially could have happened in this group. So it's going to be Osborne 2, and McNally did win their match over Londonberry, and that does secure them the second-place seed going into finals. So you see your two quarterfinals, uh, uh, finalists, rather, coming out of... Go take a quick look at Pool 2 now. All righty, and this is actually going to be our last game of the day that you guys see on stream. And I, this one is going to be a banger simply because it's Osborne one versus Wagner. And as you guys might be able to see, if Wagner does take his victory over Osborne one, we're going to have a three way tie in pool two. So th that match is going to be of utmost importance because there is playoffs on the line for uh, Osborne and Wagner in this case. And then Jasper place is just going to be holding on there, just praying that Osborne wins their game. So they don't have to worry about a three way tie. So this group will be very interesting. I'm look very much excited to watch that last match. And then we'll be moving on to pool three here, which is actually for the match. We all are about to see here, which is going to be Ainley two versus Lazert. Now there, this is honestly just a fight over first seed and second seed going into the finals. So this match will be nonetheless exciting, but a little bit less important than the fourth match of the day. And then we're going to go into pool four quickly, which also has finished up uh, per our last match there. So as you guys saw, Center High unfortunately did take the loss against Ainley, meaning that Ainley won and Ross Shepard are going to be the finalists coming out of pool four. All right, and then we can get started into our match here if the players are ready in our pick and ban. All right, per the usual... I need some immediate hot takes simply based on rank. Who cares about comps? <laughs> the immediate hot takes. My eye is on Ainley too, because again, just, just because their rank is a little bit higher, it's yeah, I don't have much more to say, honestly. <laughs> it's all right, because we're getting started in the pick and ban here. A Lizert one coming out. It looks like they are hovering the Urgot ban. Urgot's actually seen quite a resurgence in play, particularly in pro play. I think he's gotten some play up in uh, EU and I know, I think NA as well. Yeah, I do think that this is kind of like a target ban because I did look at some of the uh, match history. Uh, the top laner for Ainley 2 did play a lot of Urgot recently, so probably a target ban. And I do think that blue team, they can afford to have these target bans because they get first pick. While Ainley 2, they have to kind of ban away the first pick, um, the, just the power picks. Yeah, exactly. Just ensure that Lazert doesn't get their hands on anything that is a, a little bit priority here, which is stuff like you've seen like Seraphine's been first picked a lot even during our bracket here. I imagine it's seen quite a lot of play in the other matches that have been played off stream. Just a very, very strong pick you want to look into. And Galio. Gal has also seen a ton of play in this tournament because he's a super consistent mid laner and he also just enables a lot of different team comps. He does get ahead. He also does a heck of a lot of damage. Oh yeah, definitely. And he can also just save a lot of his members in the side lane. If if you have a Hecarim who's kind of out there, I don't know, out there in Narnia, just have Galio come in, save the day as well. And speaking, speaking of Hecarim, of Hecarim. <laughs> it's getting big. And there's a ban coming out of there. Hecarim, a very high priority jungler, uh, even in pro play and here, because for one, he has an extremely fast clear. He has easy ganks. He's Ian is ultimate, and he also just does a ton of damage as well. And as as we kind of joked about in the first day, the current meta of League, particularly in pro play, tends to be speed. And I mean, nobody yes. runs faster than the Hortz. Yeah, something's uh, interesting though is that I haven't seen we haven't seen a Udir today. Maybe they were played in uh, the other matches that were not broadcasted. But Udir is also another champion who can just run around the map really fast and slap, stun, slap, yeah. stun, get in there. Yeah, turbo <laughs> camp tank. Slap. Yeah, and actually another jungle ban coming out here with the Graves. Yeah, a lot of the focus on jungle is like those kind of farming junglers, particularly ones that can go fast. Graves is the one that, you know, he might not be able to run as fast as the other guys, but he scales up very efficiently, has decent ganks with his smoke screen, and is able to do just a lot of damage overall. Tristana also coming, uh, com uh, probably going to be the ban from Amy too as well. Tristana recently, she, she has just been very strong, paired up with... Uh, Paired up with a dive comp, maybe from a hacker room that was banned. She is able if she gets the resets off of her rocket jump, she can just zip, zip out and zip, uh, zip in a fight, 
and it's kind of difficult to catch her as well. Also a flex pick too, seeing a lot of mid lane play and uh, bottom play. Actually, oh, yeah, I'm kind of interested to see the Mordekaiser picked early. Now he is a very strong pick, but I know he does have a few counters and actually Camille is on the table. Now, even if I, I don't, not super aware of how good that lane is for, but you just see how dominant a Camille can be. Oh, and actually they might Cled. go for the Kled here. Is, I haven't seen right, is, that a lot. Is, is that a good pick into Mordekaiser? I mean, I, I, have, I think I've seen that matchup a total of twice. I honestly don't know either. Kled, I have not seen a lot in like in pro play or in some of my games either. I so think I'm it, very I think, unfamiliar. If, I think it but, is a good matchup though, because he can just like dash around with his E and he's also got the bear trap to just pull you around. So I think you can avoid Mordekaiser's slow abilities and he will out damage the ring passive. Yeah, I do think that it's interesting that Lizard kind of let the Kai'Sa slip through though, because Kai'Sa, maybe, maybe they're, they're not that familiar with the champion, but Kai'Sa is pretty strong, I think. And the nice thing about Kai'Sa too, is she's so versatile. You can play her in a dive comp, you can play her as a hyper carry, like she has so oh, many Poppy. options of how you can play her. And a Poppy, actually Poppy would be a very solid pick here, because I'm pretty sure she can deny the Kai'Sa engage and she can for sure deny the Kled engage. Now, do you know the interaction between Cledalt and Poppy W? I'm pretty sure that should knock them up, but I have seen some funny stuff in the past when it comes to that W. The thing which I'm kind of curious about, though, it's like, who's going to beat the top laner? Is this going to be a Poppy jungle? Yeah, it could be a Poppy jungle or potentially a Poppy support, too. So there are some, there is flexibility in that pick. Yeah, but with Ainley, too, the, the going for the Kled, going for the Kai'Sa, it seems like... It's a, it's again this this theme of diving into the enemy team, and it's going to be another Kai'Sa versus Zaya matchup. And when we see in the last game that we had, because of the Seraphine, the range that she has, Kai'Sa, uh, Zaya, that bot lane was able to get an advantage over the Kai'Sa, and Ainley too. They might, they still need to lock in a support and a jungler, which they might be doing right here just to prevent uh, uh, from getting banned out even more, limiting the champion pool. It, Ooh, and yeah, a Nautilus too. Nautilus. Yeah, that does really lend to that dive comp idea you're alluding to. But I think Zaya is actually such a strong pick into dive comps. Just simply, we, we actually talked about ultimate. it quite a lot in the last game. Just you just press her ultimate, you avoid a lot of the engage, and you can usually stun people up with the follow up E after you finish halting. I do have to correct you on that. Uh, her blade collar is a root, it's not a stun. Oh, a root, yes, yeah, sorry. <laughs> All good. But like Nautilus. He can, he can, he has the potential uh, ability just to lock down a member of a uh, lizard, potentially the Zaya actually, and it looks like that's a missed ban. Yeah, I might have missed that. They were they were trying for the Morgana, but you know maybe a little bit too too slow to press the button. But uh, oh uh, yeah, um, I'm just checking the chat, and it seems like uh, uh, Ainley too they banned Morgana, and it did not register. So that is a Morgana ban. Yeah, there's a Morgana ban. We'll see here if maybe the uh, the other... I'm not sure exactly what the TOs will do, but if the other team respects it, it shouldn't be too much of an issue, or they may go into a redraft here. We'll see how it goes. But judging by Lazert not banning anything there, I think the TOs are currently getting it figured out at the moment, and we may just have to do kind of like what we did last time and just run it back real quickly to what we had before. And it yeah. seems like that uh, there's a little bit of an issue with... Uh... The draft right now and because lizard one is saying that they banned frangar but it didn't lock in on time yeah it looks like we are having a, a couple technical issues there so i'll just quickly check in with my producer and see uh, what the plan is at the moment if they're just going to respect it or do we want to are we going to redo it in the meantime we have yeah, he's just quickly asking that exact question uh, to the teams at the moment. We'll let you know. Honestly, I think they, they may be down to respect it, just judging from the follow-up bans there being legitimate. Yep. And if that is the case, I think it's likely they're just going to respect the bans. Yeah, but the we're just waiting for the teams to confirm. Yeah, in the meantime, we, we're seeing the Seraphine ban. And in the last game, Seraphine and uh, Zaya just dumpstered over Kaisa and uh, who was it? It was Bard because of the range. And they were just able to have lane priority the whole entire time. And it seems like... At least. All right, so I just got confirmation quickly that they are just going to respect the ban, so Draft will carry on as assuming that uh, the Morgana and the Rengar were banned, 
and then we got the Elise pick coming in through Ainley here. So that's actually gonna because a lot of early sometimes... pressure. Yeah, it's a ton of early pressure because Elise just wants to get in there, get the ganks, and because of the Nautilus and the Cled so far, that's just so many easy setups in the top and the bottom lane. And then we just have to await the mid lane pick to see like how that lane dynamics gonna go as well. So what are some picks you think Lazert might pull out here? Uh, so right now they're looking for a jungler and a mid laner. I'm assuming. Or actually, not a jungle, a support. So we see, we're seeing this uh, Syndra lock in, who can just push the Elise away in some cases. And for support wise, I have a feeling it's going to be another gauge. It might be a Leona. Yeah, actually, Leona being open here, even like the Rel too, we were kind of talking in between the game that we haven't seen her a whole lot today. So there are a lot of potentials for what can come Thresh. out. And actually, the Thresh. Actually, Thresh is very, very good in the particularly as a, a counter engage champ, but also he can engage with this hook too. So a very versatile actually, champion to play. I do think that in like the hook battle between Thresh and Nautilus, I do think that Nautilus can um, like counter the Thresh a little bit, so that's a little bit of a downside. But that being said, he, Thresh can just stay back, have the, hold the lantern for uh, for one of his teammates, and just drag them out to safety. Yeah, because it's looking like we almost got a similar dynamic to what we had last game, where one team is looking definitely more about the dive. And what a flight. Vladimir, Vladimir here's the dive. There. Yeah, there's the dive. That's also a great scaling pick, too, because um, they have the Kai'Sa, now they have the Vladimir, and because they have Elise there to kind of parse up the early game, you're going to see a lot of strengths here. So I'll, I'll leave it to you. Kind of just maybe break down these comps and see, like, what the dynamics are. It's looking more like in a kind of another, like, counter-engage versus dive comp, but wh what are kind of the strengths of each of these comps? All right, just talking, uh, just starting with over blue side on Lizard. I'm assuming that this is going to be a poppy jungle because Mordecai's a jungle, I don't think... I haven't seen that a lot. So Poppy, she's going to be able to... Well, she's a ta she's going to be the primary tank for this team. While Mordekaiser in these team fights, I must, he's probably going to try to steal a, a drag some a drag a main carry from Ainley. So maybe the Vladimir or the Kaisa into the sh and into the death realm. Just take them out of the team fight. While the rest, while that is happening, if you have a Poppy, a Zaya, and Syndra. You have a tank. You have a tank. You have the front line, and then you also have the back line, who is just very reliable as well. And Thresh is also there to kind of protect everyone, make sure that nothing goes to, um, nothing goes out of uh, too out of hand. While Ainley on the other side, it seems like all the red teams t uh, that we've seen are going for this dive comp. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a theme that we've seen. Yeah. Now we're changing it up, guys. Now red means go. It no longer means stop. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm expecting a little bit of early action though, uh, for because of the least pick, maybe uh, in the bot lane, or potentially the top lane if uh, Kled can set up that bear trap on a rope. But it's mainly going to be the Nautilus setting up these ganks and Elise following up with her cocoon. Yeah, exactly. So I think it might be interesting too, while we're waiting for them to get all the picks and stuff done, to just maybe walk through like. What, what is a generic kind of 5v5 team fight between these people going to look like? I think this game is going to be a little bit more about like how the lanes are played and more of like the kind of 2v2, like a 2v1 to 2v2 and sometimes even a 3v3. But what, what would a 5v5 team fight between these two uh, teams like kind of play out as? I do think that um, in lead, they do have the advantage uh, because uh, they can do, they have the go button. They have the Kled ultimate. They have the Nautilus hook. If they want to go in, they just go in and... If they can get onto like a member of Lizard, what Lizard can do to counter that is Mordekaiser, as I mentioned earlier, taking a member, a crucial member such as the Kaisa or the Vladimir out of the fight. And this, again, I, I mentioned this earlier as well, Poppy's acting as a frontline, Thresh being kind of acting as peel for the carries, while Ainley, they're just going to be looking to dive onto Zaya and Syndra, getting them out of the fight as early as possible. You have the Elise who can get onto the back line. Zai can, so I can follow up on the cocoon as well. Vladimir has the, his sanguine pool to avoid all the CC too. Yeah, definitely. And I think it's also interesting too that Ainley has another option of they can play more of like a split push comp as well. Because you can pair up like the Kaisa and the Nautilus into a lane and they can slowly down vladimir is very safe in a lane he has a little bit slower turret take but because of his w he can, can usually safely split push pretty well but kled on the other hand is guy not only does he <laughs> run fast so he's super safe in a side lane but he also just melts turrets because of his w yeah i'm also expecting a little uh hopefully to we see some uh roaming from these two supports after the first back into the mid lane just seeing if they because syndra and 
uh, is an immobile carry, Nautilus can get um, a hook onto her, and if she if Syndra does not react in time, that's going to give Vladimir the advantage. That being said, Vladimir, Thresh is going to have a little bit harder time getting onto the Vladimir because of his Sanguine Pool, but if Syndra, if Syndra baits that out with her stun, with her Scatter the Weak, and have Thresh follow up on that, it can also have the potential ability to skew this matchup in the mid lane. Yeah, I think it's also going to be interesting to see. I think there might be some fighting over this bot lane scuttle again. Like we touched on it a whole bunch the last time, but because there's these two heavy engaged, like potential engaged supports, like the Thresh and the Nautilus in the bot lane, yeah, as you were alluding to, you want to enable them to roam. And the best way to do this is taking control of that bottom lane and act and just uh, taking control of that scuttle in the early game, particularly because you also have that Elise. Elise wants to set up these early ganks and just use as much as she possibly can before she kind of falls off in the later game. And if you can accelerate this Kaisa, or even the Vladimir in the mid lane, your dive comp becomes significantly stronger, and you kind of avoid that kind of like early game lull while your Vladimir and your Kaisa are kind of scaling up. Well, Kled is pretty self-sufficient throughout most of the game. Kled, yeah, he can make himself run fast. He can also make his whole team run fast as well. So just get the Nautilus in there, get the Kaisa in there, get, just get everyone in there. Dogpile onto Lizard, and try to take out Syndra and Zaya, make them irrelevant in the fight. Yeah. yeah, but so I think we're going to be like focusing a lot on the, I think the vision is going to be incredibly important again. It's always important in like League of Legends, particularly in stuff like this, because the early jungle pathing is going to be ridiculously important. Now we talked about it a whole bunch in the last game, but it's even more important in this game because like though Olaf can stay relevant throughout most of it, Elise, much like uh, actually a similar champion, Lee Sin, wants to gank a lot early. She wants to just make the laners lives a living hell <laughs> for the most part. So and denying an Elise early is is really, really suffering for that champion because that, that's when she wants to be relevant. That's when she wants to be strong. But if you stifle her out by stealing her jungle, denying her vision, and just like not letting her lanes have enough priority to even maybe successfully kill on a gank can almost negate the champion's effect. But on the flip side, if she does manage to play to her strengths and play around that early game, she can get her lane snowballing. She can get herself extremely fed and can just take over a game and not even let it get to a point where she can potentially even remotely fall off. Yeah, and I also think that uh, the interaction with Poppy W and Elise, uh, uh, her, I forgot what it's called, Repel, probably? I believe that Elise can also just jump onto the Poppy as well, like lock her down, making sure that Kai'Sa and, can also have um, a pathway onto these carries, as uh, onto the tank as well, just shred them down. Yeah, I know Elise is like, can be very interesting during those team fights because she can, for one, yeah, protect her Kaisa from a lot of damage and stuff like that, but also, yeah, set up initial picks and stuff like that. So I think a lot of the story, the early game jungle is going to be just seeing how far Elise can push her lanes ahead or just get them advantage on like uh, uh, objectives and stuff like that, much like you've seen in the previous game for Ainley. And actually, I'm, I'm almost assuming that the two Ainley teams might have the same coaching staff and if <laughs> they've dive, been drilling dive, them dive. on the if they've been drilling them on objectives that well, I think we might see another like just beautiful display of like understanding how to put vision around jungle objectives and how to play around different lanes. So I am excited to get in this game. We're just currently waiting for the spectator delay. Got another like, 40-ish seconds. But I know so we've talked to John Ainley a lot and kind of how they want to play around their jungle. But do, do you think Lazert is going to just kind of like try to survive through the early game or do you think they're going to be fairly proactive? I do think that they're going to try to use this and... and um, uh, to kind of look for roams uh, towards the bot lane, maybe, just so that they can get kind of get the Zaya ahead, as well as just pairing it up with the Poppy. She's just sometimes she can be just this unkillable tank, especially when it comes to the late game. Also, we haven't talked about this. Her ultimate, so Mordekaiser can get rid of a carry. Poppy can also just get rid of everyone. Oh, like, just get everyone <laughs> away from the objective. I forgot to talk about that. Yeah. So the poppy alt can just serve as a denial tool not only is it like a good cc setup machine but yeah you can just vitally so say they dive in you can just use poppy alt to just throw them away delay it but you can also selectively use poppy alt to remove like say they all dive in at once you can just remove two important people maybe you knock away the kaisa maybe you knock away the vladimir and you can just turn the fight in your favor the amount of counter engaged tools alert have in the form of like the threshold cinder scatter of the week mordekaiser alt even mordekaiser e to an extent or just poppy in general just 
it's going to be very difficult for Ainley to dive on these. And I think they might actually focus on like trying to dive in lane and take numbers advantages over just a sheer 5v5 team fight. Because if Lazert plays their abilities right, it's going to be very difficult for Ainley to get in and get any kills. Yeah, I do favor Lazert a little bit in the team fight just because they have this like strong tank um, paired up with Saya, this potential, this potential hyper carry in the late game. And that just on that note, I do want to see a lot of fighting around the spot lane, scu uh, the spot lane scuttle, because of how Elise just wants to be able to get ahead early. Yeah, exactly. And also getting the bottom lane scuttle ensures you vision onto both your mid lane and your bottom lane, which are her two lanes that she wants to snowball make as strong as humanly possible. Well, top lane, like she could this put her attention great. there, but I, I, I think the Kled should be able to honestly like maybe win that lane or keep potential most of the time. So I, I've asked about it most of the other games. So we've been breaking it down slowly, but I think we should just put it in concrete. Wh which lanes are pushing into each other? Where's the priority for each of these teams in that early bit when it comes to the laning phase? I'm going to just go straight to top lane right now because we we see Kled with his second, uh, this is the <laughs> second ignite, top <laughs> teleport ignite of the day. So I do think that Kled is going to try to just assert dominance over this Mordekaiser in the early game, using this ignite to his, um, having the fight to his advantage, and just kind of try to push out uh, the Mordekaiser, giving Elise room uh, into this top um, into this top river, and potentially try to try to get uh, a little bit of counter jungling done as well. You can already see a ward being placed down so that uh, Ainley can just track the jungler. Yeah, exactly. Like, see if they maybe go into their jungle or stuff like that, if they go for that. Now, I think a crucial thing, too, is like, yes, uh, Lizert does have that ward in the in the uh, river there, but I'm pretty sure that expires by the time that uh, uh, Scuttle spawns. So they will need to Probably. reassert uh, like um, vision and stuff by that point. But I don't even know if the trinkets and stuff are going to be up because the support and the mid laner have dropped down there. You can, uh, you can also already. see it already switching over to a uh, sweeper. And even though that's not going to give them vision, it's going to deny a lot of vision uh, from Lizard. And this is typically, I've seen this a lot of pro play, but I haven't seen uh, it very much in this in this tournament. I I I really like it. That's all I can say. <laughs> yeah, no, it's a solid thing to do, particularly if you do want to like path towards that scuttle and stuff like that. Because as you said, if even if like Lizard does manage to put down a good ward, like just a good ward field, if you will. If the Elise just comes in with the uh, Sweeper Ward, you can just deny all that and make it very difficult for you to know like what her actions are or anything like that. Because as you see, there's no vision on either of the junglers right now. But it looks like the uh, Elise is going for an early double buff pathing, which will make her very strong in any of the fights. And oh. actually, as you can see, Poppy is still taking blue buff, but we uh, might have an early kill into the bottom lane. And that's a great flash coming up from the Kai'Sa to confirm that. In the Oh. oh, that was such a ramped up turret shot, but that is already the bot lane accelerating. And this is honestly just a game of how quickly can Ainley accelerate these two lanes. And if they get like super far ahead, they just you favor dive comp so, so much if you're significantly stronger than your opponent. I do want to talk about the bot lane a little bit, but it looks like at least with the sweeper might be looking for something for something top lane. Yeah, but just where the wave prio is, they might have to overcommit a little bit. She's still no there. And she's still waiting for it. They might get the bear trap on a rope. I think he's trying to bait the Morkaiser in to overcommit to the oh. fight, but no, it doesn't quite hit the cocoon. But you see the poppies here, so he might actually result into a bit of a deeper fight here. Now, the key thing is they both do have double um, double buff, but I think Elise definitely wins these early game fights. And because she has a Kled right behind her, she has to respect her. And that is top scuttle, crucially, going over to the Elise and Ainley in the early game. Now, I think the uh, Poppy is going to path down and try and get to us bottom scuttle here. So we might see a fight result from that. And I think both of them may pull their mid laner. But speaking of mid laners, we've got a gank coming out in the mid lane here. And that's Elise just trying to make sure that they can't come in. But we got to fight in the bottom fighting. lane. And it's just, they blocked up the Nautilus. They're pushing him down. And, oh, just, oh, I think Ignite. the Ignite's going to tick down. I think that will kill him on the last tick. Oh, oh. Barely Observer, can we check the health? Can we check and the health? And that's the flesh. Oh, my. oh, it's healed too much already, but yeah, I think he was sitting about like 20 or something like that. Honestly, one more tick on that ignite and he would have perished. But uh, crucially, during that fight, you see the Elise does take the bottom scuttle as well. So he has got the double scuttle off significantly ahead in CS and XP at this point, having an entire level over her. And that's exactly where you want to be on this Elise. So now he has access to, um, or sorry, they have access to gank either one of these top or these mid lanes. And as you should see, bot lane is heavily pushing in against a fed Elise. I that do is want horrifying. to say, 
Yeah, I do want to say that earlier, uh, Zaya, I believe that you, uh, Zaya was, um, what's it called? Setting up a freeze a little bit earlier. That's why there's such a big wave pushing into, um, into Ainley's bot lane. And with that, uh, with that freeze, it kind of it forced the Kai'Sa and the Nautilus to walk up into the lane. And with Poppy, she was pathing towards the bot side a little bit. It would have been just very dangerous for Kai'Sa and Nautilus to go up there. And you saw uh, Nautilus nearly lost his life, but Elise, he, Elise was over there to kind of cover a little bit. So it could have gone way worse. Yeah, and you can see that Ainley is actually pinging vision and stuff like that on the bottom side. They're setting up and making sure that they have this vision control for the dragon. Though Elise is looking for this gank in the top lane, they want to make sure they know where the poppy is. And they have spotted her, crucially, but we got a fight coming up into the top lane. Good bear trap on a rope by the Kled, pulling in the Mordekaiser. And Mordekaiser does have access to Flash, but if this cocoon... Oh, he predicted it! <laughs> oh, that was so sick! And that's a kill coming down onto the top lane. Now, they do know the poppy's at the bottom. And you notice that the Nautilus roamed up to deny the poppy being able to trade that dragon but we got thresh and the rest of the bot lane coming up and the elise is going in so they might be able to just take this dragon for free if the other team isn't able to respond in time but this is a good cross map play to make when you know that the elise is top creating that gank yeah i was just waiting to see if elise would be trying to predict uh predict the flash uh and she did and she did pretty well but this if with the elise focusing her attention on the top side this is freeing uh lizard the bottom lane to be able to take over the bot lane river, reestablish control and vision, and take this uh, early ocean drake as well. The uh, observer, can we please check to see uh, what the next drake is? And it's going to be a mountain drake, so it's either going to be an infernal soul or a cloud soul in this game. Now, cloud soul is not going to be very beneficial to Elise, but the other for the other for the other champions as well. While Infernal Soul is just going to be very good for both of these damage-heavy uh, team comps as well. And we might see a little scuffle over the thing. Oh, I don't think they know they're there. Oh, oh. they missed the... Uh... I missed the stun, but it's fine. That is Poppy taking up the top scuttle there. But I think actually a cool thing to see too is though they did trade the dragon, Elise recognized this and actually just went and stole the entirety of Poppy's top jungle. And that's actually why you see the level disparity between the two champions right now. The counter jungling is just incredibly effective by the Elise, and she's just maintaining an XP and a gold lead at the moment. Now the CS looks pretty similar, but there's just there's a pretty big level advantage in the favor of the Elise at the moment. Yeah, definitely. And this is at least having this early advantage is I do believe that she's going to be looking for more pings to try to get her laners ahead as well. You can see how there's a lot of pings from which side. Sorry, my bad. <laughs> but you can see how they're trying to, again, with the vision, try, you can see the control words st uh, stacked up on Vladimir and Elise just trying to make sure that they do not lose vision on this poppy. And both junglers are on the bot side now. Something might be happening soon. Yeah, and you could crucially see that um, Ainley doesn't actually, I think, know where the poppy is. Now, they do have the ward kind of right in front of her to spot her if she does approach from that way. But um, a Lizard, on the other hand, had blue wards on the blue buff of the um, of the Elise at the moment. So they, they know where Elise is and they know where they're pathing. But actually, they I'm not sure the if they... don't see the poppy, though. Yeah, they don't know where the poppy is, so, but I think they don't know the Elise went topside, and I think they that um, Lizard might think Elise is still bottom, so they might not go for anything risky at the moment until they can confirm where the Elise is at the moment. You can see Nautilus also roaming up as well, so this was kind of the support roaming that I was talking about earlier. Ainley, again, Ainley has tempo advantage. They were able to push out the wave earlier. Nautilus is able is coming out to cover for Elise pop potentially on this invade onto the blue buff yeah and they're just they're just denying so many camps from the poppy that they just haven't been letting her level up so i don't know if they're setting up an event oh they're waiting for the poppy Ooh. oh this is so cheeky yeah i think they're gonna get the kill onto the poppy here that's also oh nice flash over the wall to get himself up but that does likely secure the blue buff or counter invade if the Elise wishes to go for it. And I think they might actually be pulling the Vladimir over here. Nope. Yeah, he's just backing. I thought they might pull over the Vladimir and donate over the blue. But it's at yeah, least just going to take the camps, take the XP. Yeah, this entire time, though, Thresh is in the bot lane, which I don't think is necessary in this case because if Ka Kaisa's not going to have a lot of kill pressure onto the Zaya this early on to the game. And adding on to that, Zaya already has ultimate. Kaisa does too. But 
there's not going to be a lot of kill pressure between the 280 carry, so I don't think that Thresh should have been should be staying with his Zaya, but instead trying to help his uh, his team elsewhere on the map. Yeah, and that's a Rift Herald take coming down for um, Ainley here. Well, actually, they trade into the turret here, but this is exactly what Lizard should be doing. I I, kinda, I do agree with maybe using the Thresh in other parts of the lane, but because they do have that 2v1 at the moment, they can take some turret plates, get some to their carry. But I think Elise but is Ainley can get more turret plates. Point. The, oh, yeah. But Ainley can't get more turret plates with the... What kind uh, of fight coming with the here? With, oh, with the nice well, stun from the Poppy the there, but the heal's coming down. We got the Elise coming down. Oh, there's the Cocoon on to the Poppy. And the shield's coming up, so he can't quite Q on him to finish him off. The Repel coming down, and that's the finish off on to the Poppy. Oh, we got the charge the coming, coming in. We're going oh, for the turret die from the Kled. And he does oh. have E still up, so he, he can go for the second one, but doesn't opt oh, for it. It's, it's a zoning alt, <laughs> but that doesn't <laughs> matter because they take the mid turret, and that's going to be a ton of gold invested onto their Vladimir. And then they're probably going to drop Rift Herald here as well to, to get a little bit more they gold. Are. No, they're not. He's just going to back and hold it for a rainy day. Yeah, I do think, I think that uh, Elise, uh, Ainley, they want to use this Rift Herald in the bot lane to get this mm. Kai'Sa ahead. Yeah, exactly, because the Kai'Sa is like only at level 7 right now. That That is just the uh, what happens when you play solo lanes. But the Vlad is far more comfortable at, at the moment. But yeah, I agree that like funneling all your stuff into the Kai'Sa is better because she is just a, a better hyper carry than the Vlad. But the Vlad is doing fine, so you don't really need to worry about her about him at the moment. Yeah, and we saw just right there where the gold advantage is sitting uh, for Ainley is the top lane and the AD carry. But crucially... This Elise as well. Already a thousand gold up on the Poppy. This early game went very well for her, and it looks like that they're going to be fighting, potentially fighting for vision over this bot side river to set up for the dragon as well. Yeah, there's about even vision on both sides here, with uh, Ainley having a little bit more priority on the dragon, like the dragon area itself. But as you see, the two control wards are kind of competing in there, but I think Elise might go in and clear out that ward, and that's going to be switching the vision over in Ainley's favor. I think we will see a fight potentially from here. Both uh, no, both top laners don't have TP. Is something vital to look at. So it's likely just going to be a four v four if they decide to go for a fight over this dragon. Yeah, I'm looking for something happening soon uh, soon in the bot lane so that Elise can use this Rift Herald to to give to get more gold onto this Kaisa as well. That so I'm going to be looking. So that might be something to look out for. Yeah, no, I play bottom lane, but also it allows them to just go up. Yeah, not only do the Rift Herald play, but also give them a dragon as dragon. well, and that is just a ton of value. So I think they Vladimir might be... is roaming down as well. Yeah, I think I think they're just going to go into the dragon take here. Uh, Poppy is unfortunately up in the mid lane here, so that's actually probably just going to be a free Drake going over in the favor of Ainley too here. Oh, don't know, Poppy's roaming down. I don't think she can do a whole lot though, and yeah, they're just going to give it up here, and they might turn their attention bottom lane and then go drop the Rift Herald. Yeah, with Zaya and Thresh recalling, it looks like. No, I think they're like going to the, push, yeah. push it mid because they have Pryo, I think. Dude. Oh, there no. There have been a lot of Cloud Souls in our broadcast of games. Yeah, and we're only getting Cloud Soul. We, we've turned into Korea, guys. We're the LCK <laughs> now. <laughs> High quality. Yeah, let's uh. go. Well, I think that's the I think that's the ongoing joke over there. Like they, they just keep getting Cloud Soul. I think they did a statistic of it, and Cloud Soul has been like the most spawned in like all of the broadcast of games of LCK <laughs> at one point. It was it was quite amusing. Yeah, and with Cloud Soul, I mentioned earlier, it's not going to be very helpful for the Elise, but for the other champions, it's going to allow for this more pick potential and the. Oh, nice stun. Yeah, it wasn't in time to stop the Elise from channeling the Rift Herald as well, but I I don't know if. Are they gonna be able to crash this in? It, it seems like that they are. Yeah, it's like it looks like yeah, it's gonna get the crash down. Not gonna get as much value as it potentially could, but at least getting some gold and then getting a little bit more gold onto the least to keep the snowball going. Yeah, Thresh is just hovering around this um, uh, what's it called this Cinderad, making clearing out some division, making sure that she is safe. But uh, while that is happening, Nautilus has also been Nautilus and Kaisa were pushing into Zaya. Yeah, there's been a lot of um, vision obje objection just on the bottom lane here between both teams. Like you've just seen how many how many control wards have been dropped in this uh, bottom lane. I mean, the bottom river between both teams has just been ridiculous. So it's been nice to see a lot of vision control here. Where in the last game, you've kind of seen a a more one sided affair when it came to vision, but there's been a lot of contention in this game. And you've just seen how how easily you can switch the vision from the enemy team to your favor. Yeah, it also seems like that Ainley know exactly where this Poppy is at all times. Like, th they were able to make sure that she wasn't able to walk into the river for a gank. 
And they were also able to kind of make sure that she couldn't get the dragon earlier as well. Yeah, no, exactly. So it, Ainley's vision control has just been so good because it's allowed the early game jungler to just have as much presence as she humanly wants, basically. So they're, they're pinging the vision there, but I think they might be setting up for something down here on the bottom side. All right, that's a big hook coming out of Thresh. Knocks the Nautilus under tower. There's trading damage here. Nice denial onto the Elise coming Over. in. We got the TP invested from the Kled coming in. They're probably going to invest the charge in here. Just going to push up the wave first. And I think we might see some juicy tower dives. I don't think they're going to dive. I want. I really want a tower. Dive. I want to, but I don't think it's. Oh, oh wait, no, they are. It. They have fulfilled my wish. They yeah. knock him up here, but there's another TP coming down from the Vlad. They gotta make sure he doesn't get up there, get picked. But he's got the W down, and the huge damage is just coming out. They're melting on to the Poppy, but huge kill that Elise is picking up the scraps on the side. And the Mordecai's are also coming down, but a little too late to turn that fight. And I think the Cinder is gonna die up on the top part of this as well. And an excellent tower dive executed by Ainley too, only losing one and trading four. Yeah, I just cast a curse. <laughs> I just cast a curse everyone right there. I didn't think it was uh, the job was going to happen, but the teleports came through and even though it seemed it seemed like that with the turret uh Lizard was going to be able to defend himself with get Thrash getting a little bit of a hook right at the start, but Ainley was just able to pull off the dive really well, using uh keeping the Kaisa safe and just using Vladimir uh, very effectively as well. Uh, and I think a crucial thing too is I don't know if Thresh had alt during that fight. I think, the, I if think he, he did. Did, did he alt in he that did. fight? I mean, I didn't see it. It was so chaotic, but... Yeah, no. But yeah, it was pretty back and forth here. But actually, we do see that Rift Herald is, spawn, is spawned now. And there, there's not a lot of vision on either side here. So actually, I think the Poppy is just going to walk up and just start it right away. But you can see there's a bunch of Ainley members up in the top lane here. And they have a sneaking suspicion, suspicion there's somebody on their neutral objective. <laughs> Yeah, you can see Nautilus uh, This is right there. Well, Thresh is still in the bot lane to help, which is, I, again, I think it's unnecessary at this point, but that was a very good block. That was a very good block, keep, keeping the poppy alive, but just the amount of counter jungling that just occurred this game is just, it's simply a result, you can see it. The poppy's only level seven, while the Elise is up at level nine right now. The poppy just had not had a ton of access to their, their jungle throughout the entire game. I also think that this is another mistake from the side of Lizard. Syndra, she has teleport. So I think that she should be the one in the bot lane instead of the Zaya who does who would have to walk all the way up into the river to be able to participate in to, in these fights. Yeah, exactly, because you saw like in the last game with the with the other Ainley team where they would yeah, switch their bot lane into the mid lane, move their mid laner with TP in the bottom whenever they wanted to set up these neutral objectives, but it's just simply not happening for Lizard here. And then they are forced to take like, yeah, 4v5s or different stuff like that where they're just completely a disadvantage. And that's just, just a free Rift Herald going over to Ainley too. And they're going to be transitioning like the priority over to the spot lane where Vladimir is already pushing in the Zaya, who just ha is a... <laughs> I can't talk right now. Zaya can be bursted out by the Vladimir, whereas Syndra, she yes, there is I still that potential ability, but he, she has the... She has a scatter the week to push him away. Yeah, exactly. I mean, the Rift Herald over there to kind of distract, so they do get the dragon, but they didn't push the wave up first, so Cinder was just able to clear the was able not to gonna clear get Shelly before either. she could even charge. Speaking of charge, <laughs> they're going in. Oh Thresh with the hook into the alt that's actually locked him down under tower. This is a beautiful flight coming down from Lizard, but the re coming in and they do manage to get the kill with the ignites ticking down on the club, but not going to take him today. A little bit of damage on here from the Mordekaiser sends Kaisa to the Shadow Realm, but I don't think he's gonna win this 1v1. Oh, actually, he's just going down, melting in the big shield coming out. We're out of the Shadow Realm. Oh, oh. huge slash comes down from Mordekaiser to confirm that and get the shutdown gold. And we still got an even fight here. Oh, and Lizert is looking to re engage with all of these low health bars. A big flash coming through from Dinko. Okay, they're looking to finish off this Elise. There's a lot of shutdown gold on that, but actually Lizert managing to take that fight using their uh, re-engage comp effectively under the tower to not let Ainley's dive be a success. Yeah, right there. Yeah, right there. When the Mordekaiser came in, everyone was a little bit low. He just came in the middle of everyone, kind of made his way over from the top lane, took out the Kaisa early. Well, not really take, taking her out, but forced her to use her ultimate to protect herself. And when Kaisa came out, she was already already very low, which, well, Ainley was not able to respond to very well. 
Yeah, exactly. And with Baron coming up in roughly 55 seconds here, you can see that there's a ton of vision from Ainley too up on the top side getting ready for it. And they're likely just going to take this scuttle for free. So there's just a sheer vision domination on the top side. And they might look to set up for Baron, even though it might be a little bit early than usual, but they're just, they're so far ahead. And they, as you see, like they can win most team fights, that, but this one, they, they don't have a tower to hit them a whole bunch if they fight around the Baron pit. I think we're looking for another mid lane fight here. The little poke coming out from the Cinder right at the start. And they're just looking to clear this wave. And Elise is just waiting, waiting in the wings. What I do love from uh, Lizard right now is that how, the amount of control wards that they have in their inventory. So even though they do, don't have a lot of vision, oh, Cinder might be in trouble. Oh yeah, they're gonna roam on that. They saw an Ooh. open no hook coming down, but it doesn't matter. Just got the Nautilus assault coming out and they dive under the tower. I know Cocoon, Cocoon has not been used yet, but you don't quite need it. And they're dead and that's actually a big turnaround for Ainley too. So they might just choose to put, go straight to Baron. Yeah, and the pings are coming down. So they have Vlad in the bottom lane, but he does have TP in case Lizard tries to force the issue. But I think this should be a pretty handy Baron going over to Ainley too, and particularly you should notice that the uh, Elise is level 10 as opposed to the Poppy's level 9. So a steal is fairly unlikely, even if they did want to attempt it. But she can knock her away with the Poppy ult, so there's always that. Mordekaiser can also just try to take some, take the Elise out of the fight as well, but that is not going to happen. Yeah, no, just a clean Baron take on Ainley after getting the pick. And then the, I want to see how they're going to utilize this. It's, it's the only lane that is pushing in currently for them. Uh, for Lazert, rather, is the top lane. The mid lane's about neutral, and so is the bottom lane. So it will delay the Baron being as effective as it could be, but I'm kind of curious to see which where Ainley decides to point the spear. Yeah, I do think that they're going to be setting up for this 1-3-1 one, one with the Vladimir and the Kled in the, in the side lanes. And crucial, crucially, Kled does, have, uh, does still have this teleport, but so does Mordekaiser, so there might be a little bit of like cross-map plays trying to be made, but... It's mainly going to be executing this 1v1, uh, sorry, 1-3-1 one, one to see, to maximize uh, the spare and buff that they have. Yeah, no, I, I completely agree. And I'd be kind of curious to see if like they try and force it all the way down or just use it to take an even bigger CS advantage or actually catch up on some of the CS advantages and just get even more gold in their favor. Because they do currently have a 4k gold lead just off of uh, mostly neutral objectives, turret plates, yada yada. So they, they just need Syndra to keep snowballing this way. Syndra is ahead of gold of Vladimir though. Mm. Yeah, because see it's been CSing quite well. So actually the mm -hmm. CS numbers still in the Zert are very, very good considering all that's been happening. Because Ainley has been pulling their laners and stuff like that to deal with neutral objectives, vision control and stuff like that, it has allowed the Zert to spend a little bit more time farming and you, it does reflect that when you can see that the Zaya is keeping up and actually is a little bit ahead of Kaisa right now. The mid lane is ahead and farm and then the top lane is only slightly trailing on the Kled. I do think that's interesting that Kaisa went, uh, not sorry, Kaisa, Zaya went for the Kraken Slayer, uh, mainly because I don't see, a, other than the Nautilus, there's not a very strong tank on on the side of Ainley. So I do think that a Gale Force or e would have been better in this situation just to get away from the Engage. And it looks like Engage is the name of the game right now. Yeah, but also a crucial thing is they're setting up for this Cloud Drake that's coming down. Now, it is only the third Drake of the game, and it is an advantage, but we don't quite have to worry about Soul. But just you see, there's no vision on the side of Lizard. They, I mean, they probably know this is going on just simply seeing the people rotate, but they don't have direct vision on it, and that is a pretty free Drake taken by Ainley too. Also, in a, uh, going back to itemization, uh, as we see Cloud taking on the top lane with Demolish. <laughs> <That's>, yeah. <laughs> he just take down towers really fast. I think it's interesting that Syndra did opt to go for this uh, Luden's Echo. Recently, uh, with the Everfrost buff, uh, we have been seeing that more often, which gives you a lot more CC. And I do think that would have been more beneficial in ag um, against this dive comp, which Ainley is running right here. Yeah, no, I completely agree with that, because you not only do you already have a lot of pre-existing options, but Cinder, once you use a Scatter of the Week, doesn't have a lot of options to get these dive champions off her. But if you do go into the Everfrost, you not only are you, you just tank here by uh, your stats, but you have that Everfrost to just push them off you even further, and it does give you a little bit more precedence to just, like, even deal with multiple divers. Say you Scatter the Week away one of them, and then another one comes in a little bit later, you still have that Everfrost to deal with it, where the nice advantage of the Luden's Echo, though, because they have squishier members like the Kai she can potentially remove them early from the fight or she can even wait for Kled to get dismounted and then just drop the alt on him to ensure that he doesn't remount. Yeah, that is another thing too uh, that could potentially happen. And 
with the thing about um, uh, this the game state right now is like there are no objectives, and it seems like we're just going to be going to this farming state. Both teams just trying to get um, get as much farm as they can to ramp up these items of all, preparing for the next uh, team fight, which is probably going to be around Baron. Yeah, most likely, judging by those timers. Now, we do have good vision control from Hanley, too, on, on the bottom side here, and I don't know if they will path into the scuttle that is spawning to kind of secure that, but it looks like actually, no, they're looking for something up in the top lane, either just counter jungling or setting up control in the, uh, with the wards here. They're just standing Sorry. right beside the control ward. Now, there we go. Again, Zaya has been parked in the spot lane the entire game, which I do again, I'm just gonna say again and I it's I think it's a mistake. They should they should have the Syndra right there because because she has the teleport available and Zaya would have to run across the map and that would take a very long time. By the time a fight happens at Baron, it might be already over when Zaya gets there. Yeah, exactly. Particularly when you have like the Cinder or even the Mordekaiser with teleport, it's just why would you bother throwing your ADC here? Because then also you can keep, like, they seem to like keeping the Thresh with the AD carry, but if you just keep your AD carry mid, it's much easier for the Thresh to respond to anything or even bail them out if they do overcommit on mid. Well, Cinder is a little bit more self-sufficient with her self-peel and even with the Zanyas. And as you said, just the teleport, you can just respond from any part on the map. And here's a stun going down on the Mordekaiser. Man, that is a ton of damage early on, but just heals most of it back with his shield. Yeah, I do. you can also see how uh, the vision that Ainley has set up in the top lane, uh, not top lane, the top jungle uh, of Lizard, because the Baron is going to be spawning in 40 seconds, they want to keep, they want to know where everyone is, and if they, if Lizard does walk up, Ainley will know when and where they are. Yeah, and they're trying to de ward, but there's no wards <laughs> in the river. They're all in your own jungle, but you will spot one out. There I mean, they go. will spot one out here. Yeah, so now they know that the uh, Thresh and Thresh and Poppy are on the top side. So, but they're also bringing everyone else over here as well. So, you Kled with the teleport, and also with the ultimate as well, he can come flying across the map. Mordekaiser, fi oh, finally, Zai is being put in the mid lane. Yeah, we, we've done it. Yeah, the Mordekaiser with the TP there too. So, if they do end up fighting calls. over Baron, there is. Uh, there is the potential for a uh, four to five man fight because we do have TPs up on all of the side laners and all teams. I mean, sorry, in the mid laner and the top laners. So I think they're just setting up. Oh, they're going for this again. We've seen this bit the bush. before. The bush camp. The, the bush camp. Okay, they do get out of there when they do see a little bit more prey than they can chew on. And it's a backroom um, Kaisa coming down. Yeah, another thing that's coming up in about a minute or so, 40 sec uh, 47 seconds ish, is the cloud dragon. And Ainley, they they're on they're on soul point. So if they want to give up this dragon, they can do it. They can offer, they can go for the Baron instead of the dragon. But unless if Lizard does not want to uh, give up Cloud Soul, uh, they would have to fight over the dragon. They would have to give up this give up this Baron. But it seems like that they're going for the Baron instead. Yeah, Lizard seeing a lot of these backs is willing to commit to this Baron play because they don't have any direct vision on it, but they are very aware that go. they're on it. And here's Ainley 2 coming in, a TP being dropped by the Mordekaiser to get in the fight lane. They knock away the Kled early. That's a lot of their front line, but the uh, Vladimir is just doing so much damage. And the Kaisa is uncontested in this back line. And they're just dropping down so much damage on this front line. And just because the Kaisa, oh, that's a huge scatter of the week. And Zai is unfortunately burning away on the back air. And they just could knock it on the Kaisa and she just melts away the entirety of Lizert, and then the Vladimir just dives in and just does way too much damage. Yeah, Vladimir diving in, it did seem like he was going to go down to the Zaya, but crucially, he did have the Sanguine Pool available, so he was able to avoid all the incoming damage after that. And with Thresh being taken out so early, there was very little peel for the Zaya and the Syndra. And with this Baron and the, the team ace that in League had, they're going to be able to take this Dragon, uh, take this cloud soul very easily without having to worry about anything. Yeah, no, just getting that uncontested cloud soul down. I mean, there is a thresh there, but I don't think they can do I a whole lot. I mean, is he actually going to go? They in? can hook it. Okay. Yeah, I, re I respect that energy, but they're going to get vision down in the bot side here, and Ainley is just firmly in the driver's seat now, sitting at a 8k gold lead. Uh, they've got all of the dragons. They currently got Baron buff, and also I think crucially, the Vladimir still has TP, so they can play this one three one quite efficiently and then the Kled is almost up on the alt again so even though they don't have TP they can still come back in at any point yeah I'm gonna look for um, 
uh, right now, I'm I do instead of the one three one. I do think that uh, Ainley wants to at least knock down one uh, inner turret. So they might focus all their efforts into one lane, and then using the advantage that they have in one lane, translate that over to the other lanes as well. Exactly, we got some fighting up in the top lane. The Zaya is actually just opening so much damage in this Kled, but Kled luckily got all to get out of there. And the shield is just uh, recharging. Oh, a big hook coming down onto this Nautilus, but they just really don't have the damage to melt him, and it's not worth putting yourself that far out of position to try and kill the big Nautilus boy. Yeah, I, oh. Oh, and a fight down on the bottom lane here, and that's unfortunately just kind of what late game Elise feels like, but it's a kill coming down onto the uh, Victor, and honestly, that is a fairly worthwhile trade, because now Victor just gets an uncontested lane Wait, to Victor? just shove up as far as he wants. I was Victor, Did you just say the, Victor? The Vladimir, the <laughs> other other V champion. <laughs> I mean, they're both AP. They both they're are both AP. AP. They do yeah. a ton of damage. They that's don't have the most CC, done. you know. <laughs> I mean, Vladimir's got, I mean, uh, Victor's got his W, but, you know, damage <laughs> they're like they're like the same champion can't you see one's completely related to blood one's a robot they're like the same oh thing. yeah definitely definitely robots just have blood coursing through their veins exactly all right and the cleds a little out of position here but just what glides on out of there past the hook and they're just yeah they're wisely using their baron buff just pushing in these lanes and letting the minions do most of the work for these remaining turrets yeah i don't think that ainley have been using this baron buff as effectively as they could i I want to see them take over the jungle again. I want to see them establish more vision so then they can suffocate uh, Lizard out from these, out from the turrets, preventing them from protecting the, uh, the turrets. Yeah, no, uh, completely. And they're just, they got, all, at least they do have priority in all lanes right now. They're, they're pushing up and I think they might be focusing on using the very tail end of that uh, Baron buff to just maybe push and take an inhibitor. I don't think they're going to be taking the inhibitor, but they're definitely going to be looking sorry. towards. Yeah, they're definitely going to be looking towards this inner turret right here with all five yeah. with all five numbers grouping up. Elisa and Clutch, they might be looking oh. to wrap around as well. Oh, nice! Wisely waits out thing. Okay, they got the. Uh, the the they, got the flash. There. they got the Thresh coming in and oh, there's just so many explosions going on. I can't keep up, but that's the Thresh going down. But a huge flash coming in from the Poppy to trade and take down the Elise. But they, they're probably going to kill up the turret here just simply off the tankiness of that Nautilus. McLeod is a little bit out here, but no, they don't decide to omit to more. They do unfortunately go down their Elise, but they take the turret and win the fight overall. Yeah, Mordekaisa has been getting some of these kill, uh, the, the last few kills recently, but he can't really do much unless he, if his team is also there to back him up. Yeah, no, he's kind of there to um, counter engage when the when the team goes in. Yeah, do clean up or even just like at the beginning of the fight, send someone to the Shadow Realm or kind of something like that. But he can't really just like walk up to like two people and attempt to fight them just because the though Ainley is like the dive comp, quote unquote, they can kite very efficiently with most of their characters. Yeah, again, uh, again in that fight, the, uh, Ainley had number advantage. They had all five members of uh, were right there, ready for that dive. While I only saw th I only saw Syndra, Zaya, and Thrash right there. The Poppy and Poppy and Mordekaiser, I didn't see them anywhere. Yeah, no, they were kind of absent from the fight until the end there, which they did manage to pick up like the counter kill onto Elise, but had to invest the flash and kind of begs the question: What would happen if they were just there at the beginning of the fight? Yeah, because if Mordekaiser was right there at the beginning of the fight. He could have taken, with his ultimate, taken someone to the death realm. Maybe take the Kaisa, maybe take the Vladimir to, to prevent the AO, the huge AoE damage coming out. And right here, I'm very happy to see Ainley just taking out all of the vision from this jungle. Yeah, with like uh, Elder Drake coming up in like a minute 20, it is still a bit away, but there's just sheer war domination uh, from Ainley too on this side of the map. And they're going to probably just look for that um, Elder Drake as soon as it spawns and just use that as Baron a win condition to take it far. Yeah, so they could look to trade objectives. I think the Elder Drake is like, don't get me wrong, Baron is incredibly valuable, but if they do get the Elder Drake, I think they just straight up win team fights off their initial engage. So I think it might be a little bit more priority than the Baron in this particular case. Yeah, definitely will. And. Well, it just seems like it seems like that they're going to be fighting again. <laughs> yeah, there's his own out here. They banish the Thresh hook out there, but all oh, the Kaisa goes in and turns it around. They're kill they get the kill onto the Thresh, and they just locked up the Nautilus, and they just burst 
and they die almost instantly. And I think we're actually sitting at about a minute under from the Elder Drake. So looks like they uh, actually can I quickly see the uh, the Elder Drake spawn or my, my great observer. Oh, it's in 30 seconds. So even if they don't just push in and win here, the death timers are up, up to 30 seconds upwards. So they, even if they can't take all of it here, they can just go switch over to Elder Drake and they have the numbers advantage. But no, they're just looking to go and fight here. So I wonder if they're just going to take this or are they going to push the issue? Yeah, Zai and Poppy, they don't really have good wave clear. Zai, she needs to be able to walk up to the wave to enable, uh, to be able to get her feathers uh, on. That's just not going to happen. Yeah, they just win the game there. They don't even bother finishing it out here. <laughs> and that is Ainley 2 taking first place in their group over Lazert 1. Yeah, again, Ainley just had really good control over the vision, had really good good control over the objectives again and we're just there before it lizard every single time now would on that note do you think there's any like key the fights and stuff like that that kind of just let ainley start the snowball and keep it going that lizard kind of maybe threw away in some cases so what, what should we like focus on looking back i do think it was a crucial dive in the bot lane uh in the, near the bot lane tier one turret it with all the teleports coming in, Ainley were just able to execute that dive very well. While Lizard, they didn't have, they didn't really respond. They didn't respond well either. Having the Vla the Vladimir was able to get onto the uh, the Zaya and just burst everyone down before anything else could have happened. Yeah, some solid takes to look at that. Well, thank you all for watching so far. We're gonna go switch to a break real quickly, and then we'll be back with Osborne One versus Wagner. Which